If we are a home of independent, fearless and credible journalism coming up this afternoon, Public Accounts Committee directs auditors to surcharge education directors at the La that they could upon education service if they fail to collect 34,000 cities rent in two weeks. More as the AG's report revealed the directorate failed to collect a total of 400,000 cities rent from some 64 staff members. Looking for at least a minimum of three invoices or quotations. That one too you fail to do. And this one we don't have any option than to refer you to the Attorney General for prosecution. Also flag bearer of the NDC, John Mahama, describes attempts by the Electoral Commission to introduce major reforms a few months into the general elections as an exercise that could win the confidence of the people in the electoral process. Plus, staggering statistics from the just-released Ghana Demographic and Health Survey shows about 18% of married men in Ghana have two or more partners. 18.4% have had sexual intercourse with persons who are neither their wives, and these are among factors increasing the spread of HIV and AIDS. We have a breakdown of the data as guarded by the Ghana Statistical Service. We are also live on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X Spaces for our Joy News on TV. My personal handle is at the Nana Aisha. Please do stay for details. Many thanks for choosing us. Join News is your home of independent, fearless and credible journalism. Let's start with the Public Accounts Committee that has directed auditors to surcharge education directors at the La Dadeko Topon Education Service if they fail to collect 34,000 cities rent in two weeks. According to the Auditor General's report, the directed failed to collect a total of 400,000 cities rent from some 64 staff members within 2021 and 2022. Appearing before the committee today, directors of the La Dadeko Topon Education Service told the committee they have been able to collect 370,000 out of the amount. The chairman of the committee has since directed that the directors pay the amount if they fail to retrieve same. I've been joined by James Averji. He is a man monitoring all of this for us. Uh, James, uh, looks like this is not the only referral today. Tell us more about today's uh, setting. James Averji. Exactly, Aisha. So, uh, it's actually not the only. We have um, a number of those. Uh, in fact, early this morning, at the early part of the sitting, uh, I at least three, uh, I mean, districts or municipal education directorates have uh, been uh, directed, the auditors have been directed to surcharge them if they fail to collect various amounts of monies being an end salaries in thousands of cities, uh, rent of accommodations occupied by some staff uh, which they have failed to collect from. Uh, other infractions also include, uh, I mean, payment vouchers to support some amounts of monies uh, that have been paid to some staff uh, without authorization. For instance, in the uh, Echuma Mwabeja uh, Education Directorate, it uh, appeared in the Auditor General's report of 2022 that a total of 34,000 Ghana cities uh, was some salaries paid to some five staff uh, between uh, the period of uh, May and December 2022. Now, these salaries uh, were supposed to be collected from these five persons. One out of those five owed or earned about some 25, 24,000 Ghana cities, one Abuaji da Costa. Now, directors of the education directorate told the committee that they have been able to retrieve some 6,000 out of the uh, over 34,000 Ghana cities. Auditors uh, indicated that they have uh, 
uh, I mean, receipt covering that. And so, uh, one Abuja Dakosta who owes about 24,000 Ghana cities till now, uh, according to the directors of the education service, uh, has not been even a CD out of this money. Uh, their information is that he is out of the country, he's in the UK, and uh, uh, they are trying to contact him to pay the money. Same was the situation for some other uh, districts as well, where uh, some uh, teachers who earned this uh, salaries have left the country. And so uh, this morning, about three or four districts were supposed to collect either rent or an end salary from some staff or teachers which were paid without approval. And the committee members obviously were not happy with some of this. A member of the committee is here uh, to uh, talk to us a bit more about this. Roxy Nelson Dapia Mokbo is a, a member of uh, the committee, also MP for North Dai. Honorable. South I, I beg your pardon. Honorable Roxin Nelson Dapamokbo, thank you so much. Uh, thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure to have joined you. <clears throat> Let's start from yesterday. Yesterday, you started by uh, going to the Constitution and uh, or some regulations quoting the fact that uh, this issue about going asking for retrospective approval of uh, some monies uh, is about time. The committee as well as auditors get a bit tougher uh, on this, uh, you clearly were not happy with the infractions we were seeing from yesterday. It, um, uh, that was correct. Uh, you will discover that in this year's report, which is the 2022 report, the approach of the auditors to in making recommendations is a far departure from what they used to do, especially in the 2021 report. When it came to matters of procurement breaches, you, you must have recalled that this committee became famous for uh, directing persons for prosecution, asking some persons to be prosecuted by the office of the attorney general. A very tall list, you know, about 240 people. Just yesterday, I think the, the National Blood Center was also... Yes, yes, but I'm giving you the background to what we did in respect of the 2021 and 2020 infractions exactly. in terms of procurement breaches. Now, suddenly we have discovered that in terms of procurement breaches in the 2022 report, the auditors have departed from allowing sanctions under the Procurement Act, Act uh, 663 2003 as amended by Act 914 2016 to asking the people to desist merely from the breach of law. And that is not what it's supposed to be. So I raised the matter and, and read S Section 92 of the Amendment Act, which provides clearly that when a portion of the statute is breached, the law must be applied. Now, in respect of the other infraction, which is also replete in, in the 2022 report, which is uh, payroll, payroll fraud or payroll infractions, especially on instances of on end salaries. It's become so many that we got worried. So we look at the verification process, and this is how it works. A teacher who is supposed to be paid his, his monthly salary, first will be verified by the head of school by indicating that yes, for the, for the month in question, the teacher has actually come to school and attended class for the entire 30 days. That's the first layer of verification. When that is done, then the second supervisor who is in charge of the area under his supervision also authenticate the information supplied by the head of the school in respect of the teacher, the teacher's work attendance and all. Now, when that is done, it is electronically certified and submitted for purposes of payment of wages. But we have discovered that the auditors are flagging many, many, many instances of teachers and not, not only within the health service, I must say, uh, the, education the education service. service. We also saw it replete in the health service. You see public officers would have abandoned posts, would have 
left unceremoniously. And yet, they would have been verified to have worked, so salaries would have been paid. So it takes external auditors to be able to establish that, in actual fact, a certain teacher, A, who has been verified to have worked for January, February, uh, uh, March, April, May, June, sometimes July, actually was not available at all for the period. But the head teacher uh, indicated that, uh, well, uh, I, I mean, the, the processes is going to... The process would have cleared them for purposes of any salary. Now, when the auditors flag this, and it's reported in the auditors' report, as we are seeing, then those heads of institutions and district directors now rush to tell the committee that they are now going back. They've been directed or it's been recommended that they recover the money from these persons. And the persons now bring payment plans to pay, okay. which is a problem because the law has clearly been breached. Both because of time, I would just want to find out quickly as a committee, but part of your work, part of your work is to, to understand the verification process to the extent that it is, for me, it is foolproof. So what we are dictating is that there appears to be a collusion between the people, maybe the head of the school and the circuit supervisor and all that. What's the recommendation? How do we resolve this going forward? We have directed the director general to work on the issue of dictating collusion. Because if the head of school is not in collusion with the absentee teacher, with the connivance of the circuit supervisor, there's no way an absentee teacher can be paid. They, they are normally may okay, but it cannot go beyond one month. But now we see instances of a whole year. You know. so, so the final word to the, uh, the ministries is to stand firmer and cross-check some yes, of this. Yes, the collusion, they should detect collusion. Okay. And so and Aisha, collusion. okay, Aisha, so that's Roxy Nelson Dapamakbo, MP for South Dai constituency. And uh, his, that's his recommendation that the collusion must stop and most of this infraction should be resolved uh, to uh, cut the more of the infractions that we have been seeing and so uh, other committee currently is still the education uh, ministry with the committee and uh, uh, that's what is happening here at parliament as we speak Tim Savage is a uh, uh, reporter in Parliament monitoring the Public Accounts Committee sitting for us. We'll definitely bring you more from Parliament in our subsequent bulletins. Right now, flag bearer of the NDC, John Dramani Mahama, says Ghanaians have become numb to cases of corruption in the country. In reference to the current Corruption Perception Index, a former president attributes the present situation to the government's lack of interest in fighting the menace. Mr. Mahama says his government, if successful, will strengthen measures to fight corruption, insisting on his readiness to discontinue the SML agreement. And now, Jima has more. The NDC is touring the Eastern Region as part of the Building Ghana Tour, the tour which is seeking the opinions of Ghanaians in drawing the party's manifesto, met labor unions in the region. At the town hall meeting, issues of corruption were raised by the electorate. According to the Corruption Perception Index 2023, Ghana maintained its score of 43 for the fourth consecutive year. The country ranks 70th out of 180 countries and territories assessed in the CPI. One would have thought that the corruption cases were enough, but it's even made Ghanaians numb. Now, Ghanaians are not surprised again. Uh, this corruption does not shock Ghanaians the way it used to shock us. Today, when there's a scandal, people are like, oh, uh, yeah, bre we, we. because they are all tired. Everybody is tired. And so even in the twilight, 
when you are about to exit office, you are still coming up with schemes to steal Ghanaians' money. And this is at a time when we have the Office of Special Prosecutor. Suddenly, they say Special Prosecutor should return all Cecilia Dapai's money to her. And then the explanation they give is that Special Prosecutor cannot handle money laundry cases and what. So what was the need to establish the Office of the Special Prosecutor? I know why it was established. It was established to go after political opponents. Unfortunately, the special prosecutor is investigating everybody. And now that is biting their own people, suddenly the special prosecutor can't do this. You can't seize this person's money. The last time he was very frustrated. Meanwhile, the NDC has indicated willingness to investigate the disbursement of COVID-19 funds. Mr. Mahama further insisted on dealing with corruption menace, indicating plans to discontinue the SML arrangement in the oil sector. An NDC government under me will not accept or recognize this SML agreement. We will not accept or recognize the SML agreement. Parliament is investigating it. The president has hurriedly gone to get KPMG to come and audit it. Whatever audit they do, I say we won't accept or respect any agreement with SML. Meanwhile, the flag bearer of the NDC says that thanks by the Electoral Commission to introduce major reforms a few months into the general elections could win the confidence of the people in the process. The Commission has proposed a change of date for the election and introduced a new executive instrument for the election. The NDC flag bearer says that proposal could result in chaos if implementation fails to yield the desired results. The former president addressed leadership of the Christian community in Koforidia as part of the building Ganatwa. Nanao Jima uh, joins me live uh, from there with more. Nanao, uh, how is the um, former president explaining this, that it could win the confidence of the public. We'll try and get Nana Ojima back. Uh, uh, there seems to be a connection problem. He'll be telling us more and also tell us more about the president's next, the former president's next stop on the building Ghana tour. Let's come back to Accra. The Attorney General uh, Godfrey Yoboadami says Cabinet is currently considering two bills to deal with mob justice and to enhance the criminal justice system. Speaking during a Ketsi call by the family of Major Mahama, the AG indicated government is concerned about the length of time trials and criminal matters take in the country and there's a deliberate push to ensure justice is delivered expeditiously. Richard Kwejo is at the AG's office. He joins me with details of that interaction. What was the reason for this visit by the family, uh, Kwejo Nyakun? Kwejo Nyakun will be back on the line to tell us more. There seem to be a uh, problem with our connection. Apologies for that. Let's get on to other stories. It's been two weeks since the Senior Staff Association of Public Universities declared a nationwide industrial action over their Tier 2 pension payments and other allowances. Since the action was declared, other groupings, including the Tertiary Education Workers Union, TEU, the Ghana Association of University Administrators, have all joined in, over, in similar concerns this joint action is affecting education at both the tertiary and basic levels. Pupils and parents are expressing frustration following the total shutdown of the University of Ghana and the Kwame Nkrumah University basic schools. First, my colleague Fred Kwesi Kwating has been to the University of Ghana basic school. He's been interacting with Benjamin Nkumsa, vice chairman of the Teachers and Educational Workers Union, TEU, uh, University of Ghana branch. As you can see, the place is empty. And why it's affecting basic school? Because in, under, in the university here, we have teachers who belong to the various unions. We have teachers who belong to TEU. We have teachers who belong to senior administration. 
You have teachers who belong to food science, the Federation of University of University Senior Science Situations. So these are categories of staffs and teachers who belong to the various unions. How many of the staff at the basic school belong to these unions? If we put it together, if I, I if if my I can I can see about we have about almost um, fifty I mean forty of teachers. Yeah. Forty of teachers. Yeah, because compared to the KG, the the primary and the um, the GHS. So about forty about forty of yeah, them now. The cleaners, the cleaners and the gardeners and the security men and but I can see a pocket of students working on campus in uniform. Who are they and why are they there if you are saying the basic school has been closed down? And the basic school doesn't comprise, it's, it's, it's a big school. And probably the people that you are seeing around are people that they are they from trees. A little dispensation has been granted to them because of, because of their peculiar problem they find themselves. So actually, those people that you see around, they are the from trees students. For how long has the school been closed down? The, the school has been closed down for most two weeks now. Two weeks? Yeah. When do we expect a resolution of this matter? Uh, as, 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 as we have been talking to most of the media, we are expected to meet government somewhere Thursday. We can now go back to the Attorney General's office where my colleague Kojo Nyako is there, where there's an interaction between the AG and family of the late Major Mahama. Kojo Nyako, uh, what was the purpose of this visit? Hello. Yes, um, you are on news today, and I'm asking what the purpose for the, today's visit was. Well, so the family, including the mother, the uncle of Major Mahama, paid a catchy call on the attorney general uh, to ostensibly uh, show their gratitude and thank them profusely for the manner in which the case has been handled and then. Uh, the conviction that the Attorney General was able to achieve. And so that is basically um, the purpose of the visit by the Major Mahama family. So what has been the reaction of the AG? Well, so uh, the AG has generally been speaking about the criminal justice system, the fact that there are delays in the prosecution of criminal cases. For instance, uh, in the juro trial, in the cases that involve jurors, you know, the jury, when they start a case, they need to stay through to the end of the case. But there are instances where jurors are absent, and then the case has to suffer some adjournment. And so they are considering an, what they call an alternative juror, so that should any juror absent him or herself, those uh, alternative jurors will step in to ensure that there is speedy adjudication of criminal matters. In fact, he says that currently there are two bills before Parliament to enhance the country's criminal justice system and so to deal with mob justice because what happened to Major Mahama uh, has become a cause of concern and shook the conscience of the nation. Basically, that is what the Attorney General has been saying about it. Richard Kwejenya Kwon is our legal affairs correspondent with that from the AG's uh, office. There's more we're bringing away in our subsequent bulletins. Now, staggering statistics from the just-released Ghana Demographic and Health Survey shows about 18% of married men in Ghana have two or more partners. 18.4% have had sexual intercourse with persons who are neither their wives. This data was put together by the Ghana Statistical Service. Join us as lead data and research analyst Isaac Ofiji has been studying the figures and now shares the details. So if you look <laughs> at the data, uh, men who are cheating, we are looking around, you know, 18%. Okay. So it simply means that if you sample about 10 married, married men, men, you find two of them who are cheating. Cheating. The figure actually is, is, a, is relatively lower when you compare it to that of women. And one other thing that we also found is that um, if you look at men who are dealing with multiple partners, the same thing, if you should sample 10 men, you get two, two of them who are two, two married men who are actually having multiple partners. Mm -hmm. Another shocking statistics or dimension of this whole narrative is that we try to look at the men who are married and are cheating mm -hmm. and they are you know, uh, status of education or educational yep. background. Yep. And one interesting trend emerged. 
that the more men get educated, mm -hmm. the more they cheat on their, their, their spouses. Their spouses, wow. And the, the more women also get educated, the less they, they cheat. cheat. Okay. And one interesting statistic is that we have a population uh, aged between 15 and 24 years, and I shot 9% of them have two or more partners. You ask yourself, people are between the age of 15 to 25 years. Are they really married? They are... <laughs> They, they have two or more partners. Wow. And if you look at that, that's rather absolutely. surprising. I, I wasn't surprised about the one about married men. I was actually mm -hmm. expecting a, a higher figure. Yes. So, so, <laughs> so I'm, I'm really surprised that it's 18%. But what I'm surprised about is the age between age 15 and, 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 24. and 24 so, who are having multiple about partners. Almost 10% of that age bracket, men, have two or more partners. Wow. And we can actually link this to the spread of HIV AIDS in Ghana, Ooh. where people are now having multiple partners and are not using contraceptives or mm. protection. That's the dangerous. The figure begins to increase when you decide to upgrade or increase the age bracket. Masquerade Festival is an incredible celebration that brings together vibrant colors, captivating performances, and rich cultural traditions. A labor group in Terma is taking advantage of the captivating nature of all its attributes combined to solicit its support for needy children in the community. Join News' is Caleb Mensah has more. Basically, the Labour Masquerade Society was formed to influence the kids in the neighborhood, to show love and care, and to draw the wrong ones to us so that we can advise them to be a better person in the neighborhood. The last time we sponsored a child, some of the children came to say, Pastor, um, me too, I'm going to learn hard. I'm going to make sure I do well in school so that you can help me get some books. Labour need DA. Educating Kola, send your call of funny, just say, I do any more. It's no middle, middle, my team, my baby, the organization, how they arrange their things, their settings from the leaders to the little guys. Even when we are marching, you can see them coordinating well, talking about their attire, the colors they use, the meanings behind the designs they do. It's very like brilliant for a new group like Labour Masquerade. The major major is to promote African culture. Um, so especially this year, the Labour is targeting a thousand two hundred. But because of the many young men who are they exceed their name. Especially this year, pressure on our power, pressure on our fledging tech. This year, 1,200 are in target. They are up on more than that. They are up on 1,400. As at now, in the 23rd, still not a good year. You put your there for fire, what's our going to see why I really know better. But maybe they are going to When we go out for the Kagamoto, we are the only masquerade team that gives food to each children. And we have children close to about 400. We feed all of them. We give them lunch, we give them rice, egg, we stew, we, we buy them um, yogurt, we buy them snacks, anything possible. So almost every parent in our community wants their children to be with that. Talking about joy, I'm expecting a whole lot this year, honestly, because I know we are large in number, we've taken a great band, and then they're going to play new tunes, like good tunes for us to dance, because I have my dancing sneakers on, I have new moves I like to show out and all that. So, Labour is a very great group, honestly. Talking about the groups here in Tema. Without on the street, and we try as much as possible for people to know that this is what we are made of. We are professionals coming from diverse groups. We don't sit in our idle homes during the X-Mans. We need to reach out to people, give out to them, let them smile by giving their token to them on the streets so that they will not see professionals are people who are always in the background.
So we are using the bomb as carried as a way of reaching the vulnerable people in the society. That is what we stand up for. This is even their third year and they are doing extremely good in the labor community. This is not Tadi, this is Tema. Let's take a break on Join News today. We'll be back with this. Hello, good afternoon. This is the business segment on Join News today with me, Pius Kojo Baka. The Ichima Kwanruma Rural Bank in the Ashanti region is working on strengthening its online banking presence to ease the difficulty in assessing deposits and loans for business and personal purposes. Chief Executive Office of the Bank, Samuel Bonsu Setra, says investors and stakeholders are being engaged to enhance products and service on the bank's mobile app. Face more. Digitization of the banking sector is gaining grounds as many financial institutions adopt online banking strategies in ensuring the convenience of customers in accessing services. The Achima Kwaoma Rural Bank is promoting the use of its mobile application. Samuel Bonsu Setre is chief executive. And we plan to deepen the operation of the mobile app. We have engaged other stakeholders who have brought on added products onto the mobile app that we are currently operating. And so customers can push money from their mobile wallet into their account, or they can take money out of their account into their mobile wallet and cash it out at any mobile money vendor that is close to them. We did this because we realized that mobile money vendors are very widely spread. And with the mobile app, it means that customers can do banking in the convenience of their neighborhoods and sometimes even in the convenience of their rooms because you can have a mobile money vendor right beside your window. And so we have brought banking very close to our customers through the mobile app and we'll continue to deepen this. Despite the country's challenged economy, the Achima Kwaoma Rural Bank recorded a profit of over 36 million Ghana cities. This is a 300% increase on the figure recorded in the previous year and an all-time high gain since the bank's establishment 40 years ago. Mr. Bonsu Setre says the bank leveraged the financial situation to offer more credits to boost businesses. We have a strategy that we adopt each year to plan around the opportunities and challenges that we envisage in the approaching year. So last year was no different. We strategized in such a way that we were able to take advantage of the opportunities that the year presented. And by God's grace, by the end of last year, we were able to make a profit of 36.6 .6 million, which was about 300% over and above the profit for the previous year, 2022. And so we wish to assure our customers, our stakeholders, that we will continue to be the profitable bank that they know. The CEO spoke to Lab Business during the opening of its latest branch in the Kumasi Central Business District of Edum. The new branch adds on the 10 already functioning branches in the Ashanti region. Already, the branch has recorded over 1,000 account openings with hopes of extending coverage. Board Chairman Emmanuel James Ousubunsu says the bank is building capacity of staff to improve services and operation. We have put in place measures to make sure that uh, uh, competence is sustained, uh, uh, excellence with regard to output is maintained, there's continuous training and update of our workers. Uh, every sector of the working class goes through periodic training from the, uh, the, the lease to the board. For Joy News, my name is Emmanuel Brantwick. <laughs> the analyst with the Institute of Energy Securities, Adam Yakubu, has revealed that Africa's huge carbon potential provides an enormous opportunity to raise finance in the increasing carbon credit market globally. Currently, the continent is home to some of the planet's most important natural carbon repositories, 
including forests and mangroves. Africa is positioning itself to do carbon credits. Said that we trade off so that there's a net off with those which, are, which countries have exhausted their carbon footprints. Africa still has potential. If you look at the number of sustainability projects we can do, can raise and use that as financing or raise that as capital or credit to be exchanged or netted off with countries that have exhausted their financing. I think that we, we can do very well, especially in Ghana. We have the potential. We can still do a number of the housing projects. We can do the tree projects. And we have a national tree project. If we can get that properly planned and properly accounted for, then at the end of the day, you can net it off. And it comes in as credits. And that's something that will be a plus to our revenue numbers. Yeah. I'll be off for business. See you at 1 p.m. with the marketplace. I am Pios Kujubaka. That is sports now. On join you today with me, Muftao Nabila Abdai, captain of the Black Stars. Andrea, you have taken responsibility for the failure of the four times African champions in this year's African Cup of Nations. Ghana was knocked out of the competition with only two points after drawing 2 2 against Mozambique on their March Day 3 encounter, which happened on January 22. Andrea, you assess as leader of the playing body, he takes responsibility for the performance of the boys. This past days has been um, very difficult days for every Ghanaian, every Ghanaian football fan and myself. I'd like to, to apologize for the results in the AFCON that we just exited. We know that um, we should have done better, that we should have brought better results to to the nation. Um, as the as the captain of of the squad, um, I'll take um, I take full responsibility for what happened on the pitch, for the playing body. We we should have done better. We should have. Um, Made sure that we we bring results to to our nation. But in football, these are things that that happened. These are things that make you make you stronger. And what doesn't kill you always make you become a stronger person individually and collectively. We are Ghana, and everybody that knows me knows that I'm never going to give up meaning we are never going to give up. We are going to rise and shine again. We are going to do this as a family. I'd like to apologize again and show our remorse. We understand the anger, the backlash, everything that came to us. We take it and we'll make sure that we put our flag back where it belongs. Thank you very much, and may God bless our homeland, Ghana. Meanwhile, the Ghana Football Association, they have taken responsibility for the failure of the team as well. The Executive Council had a meeting on Tuesday and released a statement saying that they were putting the right measures to ensure that in subsequent competitions, Ghana would do better. Let's take a look at a statement that was released by the Ghana Football Association on Tuesday night, where it says that um, they are sorry for what has happened during the uh, uh, Black Stars' participation in the African Cup of Nations. So the statement says that the Ghana Football Association extends our sincerest apologies to the good people of Ghana and all stakeholders for the recent disappointing performance of the senior national team, the Black Stars, at the African Cup of Nations, Cote d'Ivoire 2023. Uh, 
It went on to say that we understand the disappointment and frustration that such results can bring to our passionate football-loving nation. Our team's performance fell short of the high expectations and we all share and take responsibility uh, for the disappointment. Following a meeting of the Executive Council of the Association and Chairman of the Regional Football Associations on Tuesday, January 30, the GFA wishes to assure all stakeholders that the requisite steps uh, are being taken to ensure that the Black Stars uh, does well in subsequent competitions. That's your sports for now. We do have more sports stories on myjoyonline.com. We appreciate your time. And as I wrap up a show based, that's how we end the bulletin this afternoon. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Log on to myjohnline.com for more of the news and updates of all the developing stories. Do enjoy the rest of our programs.